Tyler. Have a good time. Okay. Hey, guys. Glad everyone is here. My name is Nate, and I'm the guy at the party that's going to give you an unsolicited beer recommendation. <laughs> hey, he'll love the IPA. Trust me. I look like a guy who's going to tell you like a hunting story or like about my motorcycle. <laughs> but honestly, I'm actually scared of loud noises, so. <sighs> Let's be honest, I look like I'm compensating for something. <laughs> Not like lifted truck compensating for something, but like if I told you a story about what I bench pressed in high school, you'd be like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've always been a little bit nerdy. You know, I kind of the guy who like, oh, he'd have a crush on his math teacher growing up. And that's true. I was homeschooled. <laughs> Not a ton of options. <laughs> Not only was I homeschooled though, but we were kind of a granola homeschool family. We didn't churn out essays, but we churned butter. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't write poetry, but I would write pen pals. I was a pen pal with my uncle Coyote. He lived in the Florence State Penitentiary. <laughs> and we didn't really do field trips. But I do know exactly how long it would take on the Oregon Trail for my whole family to die of dysentery. <laughs> People think homeschooling is weird, though. It's not. It's not. It's the same as public school. Like, it's not weird that I did sex ed class with my sisters. That just makes me more educated. <laughs> My sisters and I, we were big collectors growing up. We'd collect some cool geodes and rocks, collected American Girl dolls, collected emotional trauma from childhood. A lot of it. Pretty good at history class growing up. Pretty good in homeschool. History class though for me, just to let you guys kind of in on like what that's like, uh, was for me reading all six of each American Girl doll's like backstory. <laughs> I always really, I always wanted to be like the am adventurous and spunky Felicity Merriman, the unsung hero of the Revolutionary War, guys. But do not sleep on Josefina Montoya. <laughs> yeah, guys, like I don't know if you know this, but. She lived on a ranch 15 miles south of Santa Fe, even though she was scared of guns, snakes, and lightning. <laughs> Brave. But listen, it all pales in comparison to Molly McIntyre. We all know this. <laughs> Living through World War II, her dad fought in the Great War. She taught us the meaning of friendship and resilience, flamethrowers. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you guys are getting like a feel for this, but I had a weird childhood. <laughs> you seeing, are you, are, you, are we on the same page? It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna keep going. Our family was a really like into holistic nutrition before that was cool. So if I lied, I get my mouth washed out with organic hemp soap. I've, for the last like decade or so, I've been one of the only people in the continental United States who can spell quinoa first try. <laughs> and I grew up with a deep seated fear of high fructose corn syrup, strangers, and vans. <laughs> Always scared of vans. <laughs> I'm still terrified of Vans, to be honest with you. Growing up in the 90s, though, I wanted to do karate so bad. My mom put me in clogging, though, and was like, hey, it's like Irish self-defense. 
I believed it. I bought in for years. Because every time I'd be in the neighborhood and I'd see a van just like rolling through, I'd be like, And the van would just keep rolling. I was like, that shit worked. <laughs> I, I honestly thought that like, kidnapping would play a much bigger role in my childhood. <laughs> Same thing with like quicksand, the Bermuda Triangle, and like consistently being offered meth. <laughs> I mean, look at this face though. Like, I'm practically begging you to offer me drugs. <laughs> Out back. Like seven minutes from now, I do have Bitcoin. <laughs> Looking at you, Beardy. <laughs> there's a lot of things, though, that we're just not prepared for. That's what, one of the reasons I think homeschool is actually superior to public school. Because in public school, they're like, say no to drugs. But in homeschool, you can focus on the important things, like beer before liquor, never been sicker. Liquor before beer, now you're in the clear. That's life advice. And don't forget about the, just the, the constant reminder that you need. Don't make big decisions without a full stomach and empty balls. <laughs> or the classic, never buy detox tea from a fitness influencer with an itty bitty waist and a DTA. <laughs> a dump truck ass, guys. <laughs> Keep up, you know, you know who I'm talking about. You've been on Instagram. So anyways, it's been a lot of years and I've never been kidnapped. <laughs> And so I keep putting myself in increasingly dangerous situations, just waiting for it. So my wife and I were in Panama. We were staying at a dirty little hostel, having some drinks, when a local guy who happened to be there found out that I did training and stretching. And he was like, I'll pay you $100, American dollars, to give me a massage right now at midnight <laughs> while you're very drunk at a secondary location away from this hostel. <sighs> I was like, well, I'm a smart person. So I definitely say no to that unless he can beat me at a game of skill. So I was like, what should we do? He's like, arm wrestling? I could probably win at that. Pokemon battle? Like, I may be a little too nerdy. I might not get kidnapped. <laughs> Lawn darts, I left all my shit upstairs. Oh, worst. So anyways, after he beats me three times in a row at rock, paper, scissors, <laughs> I find myself walking back to his apartment at midnight while I'm barefoot in a place I've literally never been to before. So we get to his apartment, he takes off his clothes, I get down to business. I'm gonna give him $100 worth. <laughs> a lot of things, but I'm not, I'm not gonna leave it on, I'm not gonna not leave it on the, on the floor. So we work it out, finish up, timer goes off, he pops up and he hands me a $10 bill, you guys. I was so mad. I was like, legit, I came all the way to Panama I got drunk on some random unknown liquor. I went back to your apartment at midnight and you didn't even have the common courtesy to try to diddle me? What? <laughs> I've always been a little gullible though. I just kind of believe the best in people. Like even drug dealers. <laughs> Different place in Panama. <laughs> Story continues. Didn't get kidnapped, keeping it going. I ran into a guy and he's like, you wanna buy some weed? And I'm like, of course I wanna buy some weed. Look at my face. 
I'm trying to smoke weed right now. Like right now. <laughs> Guys. And so he's like, okay, cool. Come with me. I'm going to show you where we're going to get some weed. And I was like, oh, awesome. He's like, I'm going to go to that back hallway, like over there. And I was like, oh, that's so great because that looks sketchy as fuck. And I was not going to go there by myself. So I'm so glad you told me that's where you get the weed from. And, he, and I was like, okay, so I only have $20. How much does the weed cost? And he's like, $20. And I was like, <laughs> what? So lucky I had just the right amount of money, guys? Oh, what luck. So he's like, sit down on that curb, give me your money, and I'll go get the weed. I was like, all right, cool, 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 cool. So I give him the weed, and it's, or I, give him, or he, he's, uh, I give him the money, and it's all in change. It's $20 in gold Sacagawea dollars. That's what I paid him with. <laughs> And he's like, great, be right back. And I'm like, we're like having a conversation. He's speaking Spanish, I'm like speaking English, and it's, it's hard to understand. And so he's gone for like five minutes. And I was like, he's probably just, getting, he's just doing his thing. You know, whatever. He's gone 10 minutes, and I'm like, he, that guy might not come back. And he's gone like 20 minutes, and I'm like, I just don't think I'm getting any weed out of this at all. <laughs> so I'm just to this gangly white guy sitting on a curb waiting for a drug dealer and some shady dude in a hoodie rolls up to me and is like, amigo, give me your wallet, give me your iPhone. And I was like, ooh, I am not a fighter. <laughs> Good night guys, thank you very much. Proud of you guys. It's time for Nate Palmer. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. You uh, don't get to call another guy Beardy. <laughs> that was weird. Is that Beardy? Are you trying to hit me? Huh? Oh my god, that was fun. Way to go, buddy. I'm proud of you. Let's hear from the crowd It's a good time. That was a good time. Well, let's screw around a little bit.